you don't want to overload them with information, but give them as much as possible and maybe a bullet point fashion of how to check in, what's the Wi-Fi? If the deadbolt's not working, use this code to get the physical key. I want them to have all the information they need because I don't want them talking to me. I want them enjoying their time here and having a great experience. If you were to think of the most important thing to, to get your time back, because that was big. You literally said return on time. What would the you th- number one thing that you think that oh, maybe we spent too much time doing things this way? We should have just done that. Was it we yeah. should have gotten an extra cleaner? We should have gotten a PMS. We should have gotten smart locks. Like what, what thing comes to mind first when you take yourself back to the beginning stages? And yeah, you're nodding. So I know there's you're, you're reminiscent. Yeah. There's some nostalgia here. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I used to spend way too much time. I was sitting calendar reminders to send check in instructions to people that and copying, pasting, adjusting the names with your porter. And you can actually do it in Airbnb now. They have some automated messaging. Automated messaging is key because it, as you scale, you might have, I don't even know who's checking in and checking out now. Like I just, I get notified, hey, check in instructions have been sent, reservation confirmation has been sent. Um, setting up the systems up front to where you have those automated messages and you can schedule them however you want. It'll put in the person's name. You can make customized all that. Um, setting those up in a way that um, it just, it happens in the background and it takes that off your plate completely. Because if you scale multiple properties, you'd have to be worried about four to five messages you know, on sure. Friday. Sure. Yeah. And then the thing is, is setting that up in a way for guests to where you give them, you don't want to overload them with information but give them as much as possible and maybe a bullet point fashion of how to check in. What's the Wi-Fi? If the deadbolt's not working, use this code to get the physical key. I want them to have all the information they need because I don't want them talking to me. I want them enjoying their time here and having a great experience. So um, as far as directions, getting to the houses in the mountains, it could be a little tricky. So I'm, I even tell them, you know, how to download an offline version of Google maps to where if they lose cell service, they could still access maps to get to the house. Cause if I don't want them calling me at, t- at 10 PM. How do I get into your house? Is this the right house? You know? So all of that, they have is all that information to where I just want to their experience to be as seamless as possible. And don't talk to me. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> because- I, I love that. Cause you just said something that just hit me. Like we don't talk about the backup plans until they happen. So right. you're saying remove that and even include it so that it, even if it does happen, I'm still, not in, that's so cool, man. Like that's a key takeaway. I didn't, I didn't realize that like, oh yeah, even give them the code to the backup block, keypad lock yeah. in case. And now we don't do that at all our properties currently. Mm-hmm. We probably should um, just because we want to limit the amount of times guests actually touch a physical key because eventually it'll get lost. Exactly. Um, but after we had to replace the lock several times, because electronic locks will malfunction every once in a while, they'll spin constantly and drain the battery. We're like, you know what? This place is booked constantly. It's up in the mountains. Like we're going to go ahead and just give the backup key. So we don't even hear from them ever. And it's great. They'll just let us know if the lock's dead and we'll get maintenance to go change the batteries. So yeah, mm-hmm. automation is key. And um, to talk about like return on your time. At the end of the day, I want to make as much cash flow as possible with as little time output as I can. Cause most property managers, you know, eventually we may outsource, but most property managers will take 20 to 40% of top line revenue. So we're talking next year, we may do upwards of a million dollars in top line revenue. If we're to pay someone 20 to 40%, that's two to $400,000. Right. And we'll still cash flow well, but if it takes two to four hours a week to manage our properties at that point, I mean, I could do the math and be like, you know, it's probably worth a couple hours a week yeah, still you to manage, a, you know, a hefty hourly fee there, my right. friend, if you were looking to look at it that way. <laughs>